Hi guys and this is the second part of my uh, tutorial series on how to paint a weather tank and we're going to start off by actually adding more chips onto the actual tank itself there using a sponge. Now this is just uh, army foam uh, that you get from your army cases. Uh, you could also use the uh, foam sheets that you sometimes get in the back of metal miniatures uh, but the most important thing to do is actually pull bits of the foam away with your finger don't have a flat even surface so the more random uh, the foam is when you're actually dabbing it down on the miniature uh, the more organic the actual paint chips uh, should turn out what I'm actually taking note of as well guys is I'm looking for areas where I think that the actual chips would be really prominent like on the back of this um, I don't know what it is, a box <laughs> at the back of that turret there. I think that the chips would be uh, more localised towards the bottom uh, and the extreme edges of, of, of it. And uh, as it gets towards the centre of the actual box there, I think that the chips wouldn't really be uh, as prominent. You've also got to be really mindful as well, guys, not to overdo the chips. Um, it's so easy uh, to do at this sort of stage because it's so much fun to do. Um, it's you know getting that sponge and just dabbing it here and there. Uh, it's uh, it's quite fun. I've masked off the door section here at the back of the Rhino. The reason for this is I want to actually create a real contrast and a real heavy form of chipping on the edges of the Rhino door. So when I remove the actual masking tape in a moment, you'll notice that there's a big contrast between the panels. This is for two reasons. One, I think it would be, um, you'd see a lot more prominent scratches on the edges of the door where it's constantly being slammed open and slammed shut. And uh, obviously it would be handled by hands Space Marine hands, <laughs> I would imagine, are quite rough as well. But it's also when all the weathering effects are done as well, it's to make sure that you can actually tell that there's actually a door there and the whole back of that panel doesn't blend into one. And as I peel down the masking tape there, you can see that there's a huge contrast there. Now, at this moment in time, that contrast is probably a bit too stark. But as I start to add the uh, grime effects and the rust effects, it'll all start to work. I'm now going to be placing a filter all over the armour of the tank. I also want to explain what a filter actually is. We lay down a filter to break up the chromatically even finish of a vehicle. So we're trying to make it look a little uneven, a little bit patchy but we're not going to be leaving any telltale signs that are wash wood. You won't see any type of um, watermark, any type of bleeding. It will be so subtle, guys, that unless you look close, you won't actually know that it's there. But that's the look that we're trying to uh, achieve. If I didn't actually place this filter layer on the actual tank, you'd be left with that somewhat flat two-dimensional look that you sometimes see with... Um, base coated models that sometimes then get uh, uh, maybe a pin wash. So this is sort of like a trick that the pros use guys and uh, it's again so simple to do. You can also actually make your own filters guys. So say for example you've got your enamel wash and you actually want to create a filter out of that wash. You'd want to use 90% thinner to 10% wash and the thinner could be turpentine or white spirit. But as you can see, the actual filter that I'm using at this moment in time is straight from the pot and you can barely tell it's going on, which you're going to think, what are you doing? But when it's fully done and it's in its entirety, you can actually see that the tank looks so much more believable for having the filter applied as opposed to not actually applying a filter. This is the tank after the filter has been applied. As you can see, it's very subtle, but it just adds that little bit of believability that's so worth doing, especially considering how easy it is to achieve. You 
here I'm actually coming back in with hand chips now this can be quite a lengthy process guys to, to be quite honest I mean you could spend hours and hours and hours I know that some of the professional uh, military modelers out there can spend 10 hours or more just on this stage alone um, I've got to be completely honest I didn't spend that long but I did spend several hours just going around the tank actually picking out areas what I want to actually illustrate what I'm doing here is I'm actually feathering the brush on the edges and I'm actually bouncing it up and down the reason that I'm actually doing that is because I don't want any of the chips to actually look um, uniform I want them to look all uneven so as I come back down the tank panel there you can see I started to bounce the tip to actually create some random strokes on the edges the most important thing when you're actually doing hand chip skies with a brush is to actually make sure that the ferrule of the brush is rolled to a really sharp point you can do that on some paper or actually in the palette and also be very very tiny with your strokes you don't want anything to look too bold uh, otherwise it's going to start to uh, ruin the overall look of the vehicle it's worth paying extra attention to the extreme edges of panels here you can see that I'm working on some larger and more defined chips towards the bottom part of the tank this is because I believe that where the tank treads are large boulders and rocks would be flung up from the actual tank treads there and then attack the bottom of the tank after sealing in the filter layer with some satin varnish it's time to actually start creating a pin wash the pin wash is going to help bring all those rivets and panel lines to life by making them pop out with a strong shadow effect I need to thin the streaking grind down with some white spirit the reason I'm thinning down the streaking grime is because it's not going to flow around the rivets and around the panels very well without thinning it down. I'm starting to apply the AK Interactive streaking grime, but as you can see it's not flowing nowhere near as well as I'd like to in the panel lines. It should be just literally sucking off the brush and that didn't sound right guys it should literally be coming off the brush and going all around the recesses of the panel lines there but in this form where I've not diluted it enough it's just not working as well as I'd like If you pay attention to the palette in the background you can actually see that I've been thinning down that streaking grime with way more white spirit and now as I actually place it onto the tank you'll see how it flows absolutely perfect I'm just literally touching the brush on the panel lines and you can see the streaking fluids going right around the recesses of all those panels without much effort it's literally painting itself you'll see here I'll touch it brilliant those streak streaks go right around the recesses and do all the hard work for me and that's what you want really guys so if it's not flowing correctly add a little bit more thinner and it should start reacting and working the way you want it to Pin wash is over a satin varnish as I mentioned earlier guys. You could actually do this over a gloss varnish but there is a good reason why I chose in this particular instance to actually use a satin varnish. Using a satin varnish it enables me not to actually cover up the gloss varnish because you can't leave the gloss varnish so that would mean another layer of uh, varnish. The other reason is when you're actually doing the clean up stage of this pin wash which we'll be doing in a minute if you use gloss it will pretty much get rid of all stains and all marks around the area that you want to leave the wash whereas with this satin varnish it's going to leave some very faint staining around the areas that I'm using the white spirit to clean up and that actually adds a lot more believability so because that's the case that we want to do 
leave stains and marks around rivets and around panels it's much better to actually do it over a satin varnish finish Don't worry too much if you apply too much of the wash. We can easily clean it up with white spirit afterwards. The most important thing is to try not to miss any of the panels. If you miss any of the panels, it's gonna actually look a little bit silly. Everything being nice and shaded using that streaking grime. And then you've got some parts of the tank where the shadows just aren't formed correctly. You can see already in the space of a couple of minutes the tanks already started to come to life those panels have really started to pop and this is just the first stage of the pin washing there's much more work to do yet guys Don't be afraid to revisit panels that you've already washed. If the panel's not popping enough and it doesn't seem dark enough, giving it another layer of wash is not going to hurt. After letting the AK Interactive streaking grime dry for about 10 minutes, I come back in with some clean white spirit on a brush and start to get rid of areas where the stains just shouldn't be. I mentioned earlier when we actually start up the cleaning stage, there'll be very subtle stains left from where I do the clean up work. That's a good thing in this instance. Or keep going round the panels with the white spirit until all the areas that are think that the stains where they shouldn't be are removed or at least washed back to a state where they actually look convincing. watching guys please don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and stay tuned for part three which will be coming real soon